Python is a multi-purpose programming language. It's an open source. It's a powerful scripting language with simple syntax. It is used by many data scientists and developers around the world. It has simple human readable syntax. Python packages are very well documented. Python language was developed by Guido Van Rossum. The first Python version was released in 1991. Python 2 was released in 2000. Python 3 version was released in 2008. It is important to know the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. Please focus on this point. Python 2 is not same as Python 3 and Python 3 is not fully backward compatible with Python 2. If you write a code in Python 2, it may not work on Python 3. Similarly, if you write a code in Python 3, it may not work on Python 2 compiler. We are going to use Python 3 in our course here. That doesn't mean you have to learn Python 2 separately. There are some incompatibilities, but there are only subtle changes. We don't need to really learn Python 2 again separately. Only slight syntax changes are there you will be able to manage easily in future. Python 2 support will be frozen by 2020. In future, everybody will be using Python 3 only. Some companies are still using Python 2 version, but in future, everyone will eventually migrate to Python 3. If you are not able to install Jupyter Notebook in your local system, then you can use Google Colab Notebooks. Google has given us an option to work on Python Notebooks online. We can go to Google Cloud and work on these Google Colab Notebooks. Simply type Google Colab Notebooks, then this window will open. Click on Cancel, you will have this home page on 
Google Colab Notebooks. Go to File, Open New Notebook. You need to obviously log in to Google to use this Google Colab Notebook. So all of you who could not install Jupyter Notebook or Anaconda in your system, you may want to do all the exercises in Google Colab Notebook. Google Colab Notebook works exactly the same way as our Jupyter Notebook works in our local system. In our local system, we have home, we go to home and open a new Python notebook and we can change the name of the Python notebook by clicking on its name. This is local notebook. Similarly, we can go to collab notebook and we can edit, we can code it there as well. This is collab notebook and you can start coding here. Book, open the collab notebook file. You can change the notebook file name and then you can add the code cells by hitting on code button that will add the new cells. You can write the code and you can submit it to execution. On the left hand side, we see a button for submission. If we click that button, code will be submitted. Alternatively, we can write the code and submit it using control plus enter button or the other shortcut shift plus enter. If we press control plus enter, current cell will be submitted. If we press shift plus enter, current cell will be submitted. After that, next cell will be selected automatically. These are some of the basics in the notebook. We will discuss the rest of the options in the upcoming sessions. We will be using Google Colab Notebooks for our course. You can also use Jupyter Notebook. Google Colab Notebook has other options as well on the left hand side. You can always keep table of contents on. By clicking on text, we can add the text cell. Text cell is nothing but a non-code cell where we can write the header or the usual text. We go to window start and then we go to Anaconda folder and open Jupyter Notebook. Once we click on Jupyter Notebook inside Anaconda folder, it will take us to home directory. Once you are inside home, we are ready to get started with Python coding. We need to create a new Jupyter Notebook file and then write our code inside it. There is an alternative way of opening Jupyter Notebook. Open Anaconda prompt. Within Anaconda prompt, we can type the command Jupyter space notebook. Once we type this command, it will do the same job of opening the Jupyter Notebook. It will take us to home. Now inside home, we can open a new Jupyter Notebook file. On the top right hand side, you will see an option for creating a new notebook file. This is known as Jupyter Notebook file. We can rename it just by clicking on the name of the file. Right now it is untitled 3. We can change the name of the file and then create a new notebook file. Once this notebook file is created, we can start writing our Python commands inside this. This notebook file will take our commands and send it back to Python. Do the execution, give us the results. When we click on the plus sign, a new cell will be added. That is known as code cell, where we can write the Python commands and we can execute them by clicking on the run button. We write a piece of code and click the run button. It will be executed and we will see the output. Apart from using run button, we can use control plus enter command for execution of the code or we can also use shift plus enter command for execution of the code. 
control plus enter will execute the current cell shift plus enter will execute the current cell and select the next cell we are now ready to get started with coding as we discussed there are text cells and code cells we can edit the text cells if we put a hash then it becomes a header if we put two hashes it becomes a subheading or level 2 heading now there is a difference between directly writing the command whereas if we write a print function and our command the print function will make sure that the output is printed in the output cell now if we execute this we are expecting two lines of output since we haven't explicitly mentioned print in the first command we will not see the output if you want to see two lines of output then you have to mention print in the first line as well as print in the second line so from here on to be on the safe side if you want to print something in the output always mention print wherever you want to print something now let us see how errors are printed we'll try to make a mistake and check how the errors are printed let us add a new section errors let us see some of the examples of the errors in python code now when you are writing a python code there can be syntax related error or logic related error or you are calling the function name wrongly all these will contribute to error here we wrote 574 into p p is never defined that is where error is given as name p not defined in the next example we are writing 576 plus a string unsupported operand obviously we cannot add a numeric to a string in the third example we are writing print p uppercase and trying to print something but we are calling the function name wrongly obviously this will throw an error so you do it yourself and check whether you are getting the same error as i am getting here we will now see how to add comments in the code so let us add a new section comments now how do you write a comment simply in the code cell you put a hash if you add hash that whole line will be commented as you can see the color also the color will be in green when you are writing a comment 